Let's get to Tesla. They held their big investor day in Austin. Elon Musk presented his master plan part three. The stock is down 7%. <laughs> David Barnes is with me. He's shaking his head. What's the problem? Well, first of all, let's put it in perspective. Tesla was at $110 a share like six weeks ago, yep. and it yep. went to 200 yep. yep. Now it's down, you know, at 187 So it's up big on the year. True. Tesla has never in the history of the company given those details. They <laughs> always promise big things, like you say, short on detail, and then sometimes they execute and sometimes they don't. And you're just, it's a buy on Elon Musk. You're just trusting him That's true. to it's produce. But That's they it. have more competition now. Especially yeah, but that competition isn't producing either. Vehicles. That competition isn't producing. They're not meeting their own goals either. Mm. That's something Tesla's benefited from is that the competition has kind of underwhelmed so far. Yep. Mr. Senator, the Senate voted unanimously to reject President Biden's woke investing rules. That's a huge challenge now for yes. the president, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's a huge challenge. So, so it is. And, and this is a rule that the Biden administration put out that would allow 401k plans and retirement plans to invest not based on where you get the best returns, but invest based on ESG, based right. on political objectives. David Bonson sitting right next to me. The rejection of these ESG rules. Now, how does that affect investors? You know, it's funny. The senator um, talked about a 2.5% difference in return per year over the last five years. But you got to remember, it's actually much worse than that if you look at last year and the year before. Right. Last year, tech was down 40% and um, energy was up 50%, 60%. So on a risk-adjusted basis, it's even worse. You go out over the next 10 years, does anyone think that this big tech stuff that ESG people love is going to do as well in the next 10 years as it did the last 10? The government has no right That's the to issue. tell me where I can put it, my money. We have to make the argument, as the senator does, it's a philosophical disagreement. It is. It's it is. It is. Bonson, you're all right. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Okay. <laughs> school reform, school choice, march on. 32 states have moved towards some form of school choice. Now, Republicans in Ohio want to overhaul the state's education system. David, uh, you're a big-time investor. Don't you also run a school? Yeah, I was a founder of a private high school in Newport Beach, California, and I'm a huge advocate for school choice and have been preaching the merits of this for a long time. And I support, of course, private schools, parochial, uh, charter schools, homeschool. What I really believe this does is give more control to the parents, which is a wonderful thing, to soften this indoctrination. That's the biggest problem. People may not be happy with the quality of education going on, but even apart from the quality of education, it's the ideology. They're teaching things the parents have no idea are being taught to their kids. And that's what they have to address. I'd love to de-unionize the public schools, but I the think that's a long shot. The unions are the biggest shot. problem. They're yeah. the biggest problem. They have so too much power, especially in blue states like California and New Get York. Get rid of the Department of Education. Well, we don't need it. No. What, what does it do? Yeah. Can you answer what the Department of Education does? Hands out billions, hundreds of billions yeah. of dollars. Fun, funding and bureaucracy. Yeah. And real quick, if you ask a teacher right now, how, how are you teaching this curriculum? They're scared to teach because they just don't want to get in trouble. And these are good seasoned Smart teachers. Market. Let me turn to David Barnson. You're the dividend guy. You're like Apollo. First of all, what does Apollo do and what do they pay? So Apollo is an asset manager. They're investing in private equity and debt and real estate. And they grow, similar to Blackstone, which you and I have talked about many times on the show, Apollo is really good at what they do. And I want to point out, Goldman Sachs <laughs> yesterday had their investor day all day. Everyone yep. knows who Goldman Sachs is. Everything they said was on how we want to become basically more like Apollo and Blackstone. Really? We want to be an asset manager. We want more consistent earnings. We don't want to have to do all these up and down type of things that Goldman does. Apollo is a great way to play that story. What's it yield? Uh, the yield on a whole year basis is about 5%, but their oh. dividend goes up and down each quarter. Understood. Uh, Franklin Resources, what do they do and what do they pay? Now, theirs is a more consistent dividend. It's about 4.5%. They grow it every year, and they are buying stocks, bonds, are an asset manager. I love the ticker, Ben, for Ben Franklin, um, and they're very, very good at, at managing money, getting fees to do so, growing the dividend. Did you say what they pay? I can't remember. Four and a half percent. Uh, I said it almost five seconds ago. Well, I have no short-term memory. <laughs> you understand these things, David. I'm of a certain vintage. All right, David, thank you very much indeed. Uh, here's a good yes. question for you, and I know you've studied this. Mm. <laughs> what do mm. Californians think of Governor Newsom running for, governor, uh, running for president in 2024? Quinnipiac poll. 44 percent approve of the job he's doing right now as their governor. 70% don't want him to run for president in 24. That includes 54% of Democratic voters. <laughs> but is this like Florida, where they selfishly say, no, DeSantis, don't run for president because we want to keep you here no, as our governor? I, 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 I don't no, think so. No. Well, okay. So when you ask them, 
What do Californians disapprove of so much about his job performance? I didn't expect this, although it is a major problem. 22% say homelessness is the most press- pressing issue, followed by affordable housing. Hmm. Inflation there at 10%. Uh, David Barnson uh, lives and works in California, except when he's, when he's with us in New York City. What do you think? We, I, here's my question. I can't believe that the rest of the country would ever accept Gavin Newsom as the president of the United States. Well, that's interesting because I'm going to go on air right now and predict that Gavin Newsom will be the Democrat nominee in 2024. I do not believe it'll be President Biden, and I most certainly do not believe it'll be Vice President Harris. And that's not because I think Gavin Newsom will be a popular choice. He's a very talented politician. He's a god-awful governor, (laughs) but he's a very talented politician. He whooped that recall by 25 points. And he is very well healed. He's playing his cards right. The problem with the poll is that people are responding to the issues. The homelessness is a disaster. Crime is a disaster. Education, his COVID things were a disaster. Yet, then when they get to go vote, they reelected that mayor in L.A. Or they vote with their feet and leave. But that's the thing is it's red state people leaving. Okay. And so. if nominated, he will not win, said Stuart Varney on March the 2nd, Ooh. 2023. Okay. All right, all right. I give oh, you. this is interesting. All right, thanks very much, everybody. David and Lauren, thank you. Coming up.